Good day fellow scapers, my name's Deck, but please call me Hobo and welcome back to my channel. So in the last few videos I've been talking a lot about how I've been generating some of my cash at the moment as well as starting to get 1 million free Slayer experience per week just for running the Elite Dungeons and I figured it's finally time to show you how. Now I will say this guide is going to be more aimed to people who can reliably run the dungeon two to three times an hour, perhaps even unreliably do it four times an hour. The expectation would also be that you have some of the end game items required for a high level setup, which I will touch on in a second, as well as a good understanding of the boss mechanics as well. But first, I would like to explain a few things. This guide will be looking to show you how you can really effectively manage your cooldowns on your abilities that will help you absolutely smash the mobs on the inside of the dungeon. When I show you how, you will start to understand that through really effective use of AoE management, movement, and a little bit of timing, you can be nailing a reliable average of 65 million GP an hour. I'll be using footage of me doing it and also referring to a map that you can find on the RuneScape wiki, which I'll include a link of in the description. This will be on how to run the dungeon effectively, I'll be releasing another guide on how to one cycle Sarah U with ease very soon, which also helps to contribute to these runs. For my inventory, I will run with the following. One overload, a renewal, a weapon poison plus plus plus. If you want to, you can use intense sticks to further boost poison damage. I'll have an adrenaline renewal potion, a blessed flask, but a super restore will work just fine. Excalibur and a shard for the free heals and the free prayer. Runes for Smoke Cloud, Nexus Pouch, Von Bombs, a Power Burst of Acceleration, and a couple of Saradomin Brews for health that doesn't drain adrenaline. Um, I also carry some Amanishi Lucky Charms that further increase how much GP you get per hour from the mobs. These aren't essential, but you get a chance to get some rares. Now, they can be bought from the trader at Demonheim, just in case you don't know where to get them. I also have an Ark Journal that you can get by speaking to Sharkborn on Waco Island. Now, this is linked to Amanishi by law and content. I'll put a link in the description, but basically this is what helps you to net the 1 million Slayer experience through teleports to Ling using chimes. If you don't know what I'm talking about, watch my video uh, around the free Slayer experience. For my inventory though, there's nothing special I wouldn't say. That's pretty much everything. In terms of what you'll need to be wearing, you'll use the following. OmniGuard is recommended, but it's not essential. It is worth noting you'll need a Death Guard or an EOF stored spec for the Death Guard if you're using the Omni. It is almost essential, however, to use a Soulbound Lantern for this method as this boosts the amount of souls that you can store up to five. For the armor, you'll use the hood, robe, top, bottom, and the foot wraps of the first Necromancer. An Amulet of Finality with a spec stored from a Death Guard or potentially an Amulet of Souls. Uh, you'll want a Zuck Cape, Cinderbanes, Wembuck, and a Rune Pouch. You'll also need a Ring of Death for this due to the massive amounts of passive adrenaline gain you'll obtain for smashing the mobs. I have standard best in sl slot perks for PVM. The link for optimal perks is in the description. I'll be using a Vampirism Aura and my relic setup is the following. Persistent Rage, which means your adrenaline generates outside of combat. Fury of the Small, all gen adrenaline generating basic abilities generate an additional 1% adrenaline. And the Conservation of Energy Relic, which means that after using an ultimate ability, I will regain 10% adrenaline. I have a Calgarian Demon Familiar with the crit boost in play at all times. The update for the auto on this came in very helpful. But aside from that, we've covered our kit. Let's get into the dungeon. I'll break it down floor by floor with a clear view on what needs to be done for each one. Before you go into the dungeon, you'll want to ensure that you've taken sips from all your potions. So your overload, your renewal, and your weapon poison. You'll want to summon all your conjures, extend them, and then cast darkness, which will last for the entirety of this run. You'll want to hit activate on vampirism, and then you're just gonna to want to head in. So let's take a look at the first floor. There is nothing I would say particularly of note on the first floor. You're pretty much just gonna brute force it. The key abilities that you'll be using in order will be dive and surge to quickly access the relevant mob, and then you'll use threads of fate into a soul sap and then volley of souls. And that's your first mob dead. 
After this, when the gate's clear, take a sip of your power burst of acceleration and dive and surge in combination to the end before tagging two enemies with bloat. I would suggest you use the first scythe ability, followed by a command putrid zombie, then finish off with scythe two and three. Something to note is that sometimes the minions will die and your character won't know what to do without target cycling or clicking a, another target manually. So if you need to, do that. When the mob is dead and the gate is opened, head towards it and resummon your zombie. Draw their aggression and then use escape. They'll basically try and bunch up as they chase you and then you're just gonna finish them off with another scythe command zombie scythe combo. The important ability to not use here is threads of fate if it's off cooldown. After I've finished them off, normally I'll use my shard for prayer and then head through the door to floor two. Overall, this floor should take no more than, I would say, probably about a minute. For these creatures, next, typically I'll just use Threads of Fate into a Soul Sap, into a Volley of Souls. You want to do it on the healer because he's got slightly more HP, so it means that he'll actually still be alive, or sorry, he'll be alive when he should be alive and won't die early. I'll then build to Death Skulls and use on the last three targets on the left. Do not use your stored EOF spec nor Finger of Death for this. You want to keep your stacks high. After this, move on. Don't bother hitting any of the baby Sirius. Just pray mage and run to the end of the figure of eights. The last gate will be guarded by three enemies. Normally by this point, due to not having used any of my necrosis stacks, I'll have a little bit of fun. Wait for threads of fate to come off cooldown. Then use it, followed by my we weapon spec. It is very rare not to hit all 20Ks for an instant clear to the Sanctum Guardian. At this point, you've just cleared a checkpoint. Teleport towards retreat, use the bank, the fountain, and the crystal. It's also worthwhile remembering that if you've just finished a Slayer contract, to use the Art Journal to teleport to Port Sarum and then charter to Amanishi Beach, you'll be within spitting distance of Ling, who's ready to hand you your next Alkalite of the Seriu Slayer contract. Anyway, back towards retreat. Use his portal and get back using the chest to teleport to the boss entrance for the Sanctum Guardian. I found that if you can kill the Guardian in around 35 to 55 seconds, you're on the right track for a sub 15 minute dungeon run, which also means that you then can do it four times. I use a typical DPS rotation, pre-summon, followed by a smoke cloud vom bomb into a Death Skulls, build to 100% living death, and then spam Death Skulls and Finger of Death a bunch of times with Split Soul active. I'll throw in a Diver in and around the melee attacks if I'm low on adrenaline. This normally does me just fine, Use an Excalibur and a Shard at the end, and let's move on. Now we move on to floor three. You may find you're coming out of that battle a little low on adrenaline. What I like to do is dive and surge to the first set of minions, and whilst I'm running to the gate, I'll target cycle and spam, build, spam basics to build some adrenaline. There is also one of the Hanto cell swords that patrols in a circle. I'd recommend if he's walking down the bit that you surge down to use him to build adrenaline on. He doesn't have to die straight away because when you get to the two gate guardians, you'll be using scythe abilities one through three, which should help also finish off the Hanto Cell Sword before he can spec you. Now, before we move on to the next part, I'd like to explain something that is a preference that I would highly recommend. Coming out of this little scuffle, you may find yourself low on adrenaline. You can target cycle to build back, but I'd very much recommend having the limitless sigil here. It will make your life a lot easier in the long run. If you don't, then build adrenaline quickly before using Surge to the end of the hallway. If you can and you need to, use Limitless, then Devotion. Pray ranged, followed by Dive and Surge, pass the Death Lotus Rangers, target the Zealots, use Threads of Fate into a Soul Sap, Volley of Souls, and then finally, if necessary, use the Death Guard Special Attack. Move through the gate, and when you're starting to run around, Sip a power burst of acceleration and dive and surge around the roundabout. Kill the gate guardian and continue. As you're running through, where possible, just tag enemies with target cycle and use basics to boost your adrenaline. When you get to the next set of cloak zealots, you're going to want to use a Threads of Fate, a Volley of Souls, uh, Soul Sap into Volley of Souls again. If you didn't have any souls to start with, just use your standard Threads into Sap into Volley. As you're running through, summon your putrid zombie and when you get to the top, Tag the central zealot with the bloat, and then use scythe one on the furthest zealot away. When your zombie catches up, command him to make an explode, and then follow up with scythes two and three, and then some basics if necessary. 
Remember, it's always the zealots that block the doors, not the crustaceans. When you've cleared those up, head through the door onto floor four. A good point of reference here is that you should be coming to the end of your first overload and renewal potion right about now. If you can complete up to this section in less than six minutes, you're on the right track. Head through the door and resip your overload and renewal. Summon your conjures and use death skulls on the healers followed up with basics on the DPS enemies to build adrenaline. Then finally, head through and as you're heading down the stairs, tag one of the nearest enemies with the bloat and then build back to 100% adrenaline on him as you're running past. Make sure you drag one of the cell swords with you and head to the furthest pillar on the right. Tag one of the renegades with another bloat and then use split soul Build to 100% adrenaline on one of the cell swords whilst they all group around you. When they've all gathered, you want to target the nearest renegade and command your zombie. Follow up with Scythes 1 through 3, which should clear the remaining enemies and provide you with maximum souls if you didn't have them already. Do not use Threads of Fate or your Necrosis stacks for this part, we're going to be saving them for just a moment. Once the gate is opened, dive and surge, and then surge to the right. Use Threads of Fate and then your death card spec. Now they won't always die, so you can then target cycle before the next ability and use a volley of salts. That pretty much clears the mobs for me nine in 10 times at the very least. If not, pop a cheeky finger in there for anyone that's left over, wait for the gate to clear, then teleport towards retreat. Hit the bank, fountain, then the crystal and jump straight back in and use the test to, to teleport to Masuta. For Masuta, I find a kill time of up to 2 minutes 50 is just fine for keeping with the 15 minute run. I do pretty much what I do for the Sanctum Guardian, which is use Death Skulls, Ultimate, and then more Death Skulls. The only thing that changes is that I'll have to pop a Devotion to protect against his Hurricane and Whirlwind attacks, and the timing of my Split Soul will be based around this. Of course, there is the time gated mechanic with the pulls, but when he's attackable, I'll just command my Ghost, command my Skeleton, use a Vulm Bomb, and then go straight into Death Skulls. I'll then typically follow up with Split Soul and then dump all of my stacks and specs into him to the point where he's pretty much dead afterwards with an invoke death. I'll use a Diver if, if and when I know I'll be hit by a magic attack. Once Masuta is dead, head through the door, dive down one of the roots whilst playing Magic. For this bit, again, Limitless really helps. If you're low on adrenaline after the battle, just pop a Limitless and then use your Devotion instead of waiting for your adrenaline to refill to 50%. Do this as you go around the bend and then use your threads of fate into a soul sap on the nearest of the three crystals in a row. Use volley of souls on the middle crystal and after this you're free to use whatever abilities you want but I recommend if possible get close to the crystal in the middle of the floor. Use the death skulls on it and then stand between the last remaining two crystals and dump specs into them. After this tell you to wars and get your preset for Seriyu. You should by this point have around three to four minutes to kill Siryu and rebank before running back into the dungeon to do it all over again. That being said, before you go running off, I wanted to say the following. I'll be making a Siryu specific guide that is one cycle only, and that will likely release before the end of the next week. The key to this guide was to show you how to manage your cooldown, so I'm going to recap for you and show you basically what we've done. In the first room, you've used Fated Souls and a Zombie Scythe combo whilst keeping High Necrosis stacks. In the next room, you've used Fated Souls, Death Skulls, Saving Necrosis stacks, and then a Fated Death Grasp, which used all of your Necrosis stacks. In the room after that, you've used a Scythe combo with Adrenaline Building, then use a Fated Soul Grasp. You have then used Fated Souls and then a Bloated Zombie Scythe combo. In the next room, you have saved Necrosis stacks till the end, as well as had to deal with not having Threads of Fate available. You've used Death Skulls and a Bloated Zombie Scythe combo, and then a Fated Soul Grasp at the end. With the Crystal Room, it wasn't anything special. You've dumped everything you had at the enemies and included a Fated Souls combo. But that's it for this guide. Hopefully you found it useful. I'd advise practicing with this setup, refine the runs, so when the guide for one cycling Seriu comes out next week, you'll be ready to be running the dungeon four times an hour. If you like the content, found it useful in any way, or wish I'd done more of something, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave your feedback. But for now, I'll catch you in the next video. Happy scaping!